What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, the two new upcoming packages, part one, the physical infrastructure package, which is over $1 trillion and has now officially passed the Senate and will be moving on to the House of Representatives, which may or may not go on to a vote in the House of Representatives. We'll be talking about that in this video without the next stimulus package as part two the next stimulus package, which is $3.5 trillion, which will be the largest stimulus package ever, is in the voting process in the Senate. It has gone through two procedural votes uh, that has passed in the Senate over the course of the last several days. Those procedural votes passed in the Senate with a 50 to 49 vote um, passage. 50 Democrats voted yes. 49 Republicans have voted no. It's not officially passed. Um, the bill hasn't been written yet. We're going to be having that here in the next several days. Um, but the first two procedural votes have passed. Remember, it's a multi-step voting process, just like the infrastructure package was. And then we will be seeing the bill introduced here um, sometime here in the near future as well. And then continue on with the rest of the voting process on this st next stimulus package, which is the largest stimulus package yet to date at $3.5 trillion. For the comparison purposes, the third stimulus check package, which actually had the largest stimulus checks yet, um, at $1,400 for adults, $1,400 for children, $1,400 for adult dependents and college students, which actually didn't even receive stimulus checks from the first and second rounds. And on top of that, it had the child tax credits, which were $3,000 to $3,600, but are only passed for this one year. Uh, that package, the third stimulus check package, was only $1.9 trillion. This next stimulus package, the fourth stimulus package, uh, has been announced at $3.5 trillion. Now, the Democrats are kind of arguing amongst themselves. I say the Democrats because the Democrats are going to pass this next stimulus package on their own. Um, and that's how the first two procedural votes went as well. 50 Democrats voted yes. 49 Republicans voted no. Um, there's 50 Republicans, but one Republican senator wasn't there for the vote. If it was a 50-50 tie, if it's the 50, 50th Republican was there to vote no, then the vice president of the United States would have stepped in for the tiebreaker vote for the 51st vote, which is the reconciliation process. Uh, normally, you need 60 votes to pass a vote in the Senate, which is called the filibuster. But with the reconciliation process, you only need a simple majority to pass votes in the Senate, 50 to 51 votes. So that is how is this next stimulus package, the fourth stimulus, pa stimulus package is going to be passed in the Senate. That is the process they're going through right now. And that is exactly how the third stimulus check package was passed. It had the $1,400 stimulus checks. It had the $3,000 to $3,600 child tax credits. Those are only passed for this one year. For 65 million children. Okay, um, those will expire at the end of this year. Okay, um, so if you have children, um, you want them to pass the next package and extend that in this next package. Um, they want to do that in this next package. They also want to put adult tax credits in this next package. We don't know exactly what that's going to entail yet, how much it's going to be. Are they going to be monthly checks? Are they going to be uh, who they're going to be. Are they going to be for low and middle income adults? We don't exactly know that yet, but they have said there will be an adult tax credit as well, in addition to an extension of the child tax credits in this next package. Uh, we're also going to go over some proposals for a potential $1,200 check monthly that's on the table, as well as another interesting uh, stimulus check proposal that has been introduced into Congress right now. There's several different stimulus check proposals that have actually been introduced recently um, that could be included in this next stimulus package. In fact, some of the most recent stimulus check proposals, in fact, as you can see here, some are calling for monthly $1,200 stimulus checks. Would they help average Americans? So this was actually dated yesterday, August 15th. And this actually comes from a new proposal from Democratic Representative Ilhan Omar, which would be new monthly stimulus checks that would pay adults $1,200 per month, every single month, 
for a specified amount of time that has not been specified at this point. And $600 monthly checks for children, also known as guaranteed income or universal basic income, in Representative Ilhan Omar's proposed plan. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, a Minnesota Democrat, is proposing a plan to provide monthly stimulus payments up to $1,200 per month for adults and $600 for children. The sending unconditional payments to people overcoming resistance to triumph plan or support is designed to build a 21st century economy that is reflective of Americans' everyday needs, according to a press release. For too long, we have prioritized endless growth while millions of Americans hungry or without health care. The pandemic has laid bare these inequalities. We as a nation have the ability to make sure everyone has their basic needs like food, housing, and health care met. A new Office of Guaranteed Income Programs would be established in the Treasury Department to oversee the payments under the proposal, which has not passed yet. United States residents 18 and older would receive $1,200 payments, while child dependents would receive $600 monthly if passed. Eligibility is dependent on income. For example, single, ta single taxpayers would have to have an adjusted gross income of $75,000 or less. For married couples filing jointly, maximum income would have to be less than $150,000. These stimulus payments would then gradually be scaled down $5 for every $100 over those income levels, which is actually very similar to the third stimulus check income qualifications. Now, Ilhan Omar has actually based this guaranteed income proposal, which would be nationwide, her proposal, off of guaranteed income programs that are going on across the country in dozens of cities nationwide for, from the Mayors for Guaranteed Income program, as you can see here on the screen. This is already going on in the country in dozens of cities nationwide in various amounts. If you're interested in these programs, you can look up the Mayors for a Guaranteed Income program. These are programs for universal basic income or guaranteed income that pay low-income adults and low-income families in these particular cities um, for a certain amount of people, anywhere from about $500 per month up to a thousand or a little bit more than a thousand dollars per month guaranteed income for a certain amount of people. It's generally, um, a few hundred or a few thousand people per city, um, in guaranteed income pilot programs or test programs across the country in all these cities. These are programs that are already approved and are already live in all of these cities. Another proposal on the table is from a, a new proposal is from Congressman Mo Brooks. Can Congressman Mo Brooks has introduced a bill, as you can see here on the screen, forcing communist China to pay for America's trillions of dollars in uh, losses from the pandemic. This is called the China COVID Restitution Act. Congressman Brooks says that communist China must atone for its wrongdoings by compensating America and Americans for losses suffered as a result of the pandemic. Regardless of whether China's conduct was negligent or reckless or intentional, China knowingly created this virus in the Wuhan Institute of Virology without implementing the necessary, necessary containment measures needed to prevent this virus from circling the globe and killing millions. Not only did China lie about the origins, China also lied and covered up both the contagiousness and the legality of this virus, while also allowing international travel and thus exporting a global pandemic. China's lies kill. My bill, the China Restitution Act, holds communist China accountable for their horrific actions and compensates American citizens and governments for the losses suffered at the hands of communist China. This particular bill has several different things on it, like uh, as you can see here on the screen, one of which it could establish a tariff that would automatically increase by 10% each year until the president certifies that enough money has been collected to fully compensate and reimburse the United States for damages caused by the virus. 
The money from this restitution trust fund could be spent on the following and full compensation for personal injury or loss based on the entire pandemic. So this particular bill, very, very interesting, basically could force China to pay for all the losses that our country incurred by simply putting a tariff or a tax on any goods coming into the country. Now, we could actually do this without them even allowing it because we can tax anything coming into our country. So we don't need to get their okay to do this because, of course, China would never okay it. But anything that comes into our country, we can tax. As soon as it comes into the border, we can put a tax on it. Okay, so as soon as it comes into the border, we slap a tax on it, and that tax can then pay for the losses. It's a very interesting concept if passed. So those taxes could then be redist uh, redistributed to the people, to the economy, to the businesses, and could thereby maybe potentially pay for the entire losses of the pandemic. Very interesting concept. Let me know your thoughts on this. Of course, two of the other famous proposals, uh, Detroit Representative Rashida Tlaib and also Pramila Jayapal, who's the leader of the Democratic Progressive Caucus in the House of Representatives. She's largely considered the um, biggest leader of the House behind Nancy Pelosi, um, the leader of about 100 Democrats in the House of Representatives, has introduced a bill for a one-time $2,000 stimulus check then followed by $1,000 monthly recurring payments until one year after the pandemic is declared over, as well as the bill that's been introduced in the Senate by co-written by or co-authored by Senator Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren that is pushing President Biden or Congress, really, because remember, the bills start with Congress. Biden is the end person, the person who signs it at the end. But if President Biden gets behind any one particular bill, um, that would pretty much be uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. Because if Biden comes out and says, yes, I want you guys to do this, then pretty much it would be a done deal. Um, they have both co-authored a bill that is pushing President Biden for $2,000 monthly stimulus checks. Uh, but this bill would go until the pandemic is declared over, which we largely thought would be by the end of this year. However, now that we have over 100,000 new people testing positive every day with the Delta variant, that probably won't be the case. Now, President Biden himself has said that he's open to a fourth stimulus check apparently, especially if Congress wants to include it. We do know that Congress wants to include it. We have over 80 different Democrats from the House of Representatives, the Democratic Progressive Caucus, uh, that is in support of a forced stimulus check. They just need to include it in this next package that they're working on right now. And over 28 lawmakers from the Senate, Senator Bernie Sanders, um, especially, and Elizabeth Warren, that are in favor of monthly recurring stimulus checks to be included in this next package. Now, the child tax credits are kind of recurring checks, um, $250 to $300 per month. So they do want to include that in this next package. They are saying there's going to be an adult tax credit in this next package. Will those be monthly recurring checks for adults? Uh, we will be seeing here shortly. Um, but uh, honestly, we're going to be seeing a lot here pretty shortly on what's going to be in this next bill. But we need to make sure that these lawmakers, these Democratic lawmakers, because remember, the Democrats are going to pass this bill without Republicans. Um, we need to make sure that they remember that they don't forget about all these things that they have said uh, that they want to include in this next package. And really, with uh, Delta cases being over 100,000 per day, people testing positive, uh, that now is not the time to forget about the American people. Also, President Biden is going to be giving a speech later today about the U.S. pulling out of Afghanistan. Um, there's a lot of controversy going on over this. But remember, it was actually former President Trump who originally made the decision to pull out of Afghanistan. In fact, Biden, and again, I don't pick sides, but I think a lot of people have forgotten that former President Trump made the decision to originally pull out of Afghanistan. And Biden wants to pull out of Afghanistan as well. So both Republican, former President Trump, and Democrat, current President Biden, both want to pull out of Afghanistan. Um, so 
I agree. I mean, we've been there for 20 years. We've lost how many American lives? We've spent trillions of dollars. And if, if we don't pull out now, when do we pull out? Do we stay there for another year? Same thing's going to happen. Do we stay there for another two years? Same thing's going to happen. Do we stay there for another 10 years? And then we pull out? Same thing's going to happen. It's an unfortunate situation, but do we stay there forever? Do we continue to spend trillions and trillions of dollars on really a, a war that's not our own? It's, it, it's a tough situation, but like, why, are, why isn't any other country funding this and sending their troops over there and, you know, losing lives? And, you know, it's just, it's an unfortunate situation. But I mean, former President Trump, he's the one that made the initial withdrawal order um, Biden actually extended it and that we actually stayed there longer. But I mean, both presidents said it's time to withdraw. We've been there for 20 years. And I mean, 20 years, how long are we going to stay there? So I don't know. I, I, my thoughts are it's time to bring our boys home. What are we going to, even if we temporarily delayed it, another year or two blows by, the same situation, same thing happens. I mean, we can't stay there forever. I mean, if we stayed there for another year or two, the same exact thing would happen. So again, do we continue to spend billions and trillions of dollars and lose American lives to for the same result to eventually happen? You can let me know your thoughts, but uh, I think I think the easiest way to think about it is both former President Trump and current President Biden both agree on the same thing, which like never happens on anything. They both think it's the right decision to bring our troops home and stop spending billions and trillions of dollars on um, a foreign war that's not our own anymore at this point. Um, I think it's the right decision. You can let me know your thoughts if you think differently, but uh, I'd rather see the money spent on our own country here, on our own problems at this point. But, uh, you know, I, I just feel like it's something that had to happen eventually. Bring uh, Bring our troops home. And let's spend it on our own problems. I mean, at some point, we, we can't be involved in everybody else's problems and be sending our own troops across the world everywhere else. You know, I mean, think about all the other countries in the world. We're going to send our own troops everywhere else. We've been there for 20 years. I don't know. It's a tough decision. There's a lot of complex, tough decisions in the world, but... Um, at some point we got to come back home. It's been 20 years. You can let me know your thoughts if you think differently. Um, yeah. And another thing is that if everybody's worried about inflation and the amount of money that's being spent right now, we've spent trillions of dollars on this war. And every day that we're there is, is billions and billions. Well, I don't know if, it, I don't know if it's billions of dollars per day, but I mean, the longer we're there is billions and billions and billions of dollars just being spent, just being, just being gone. We could be spending that money here at home, and that's not even counting the lives lost, you know? So, you know, I don't know. I just think it's time. I just think it's time to focus here at home. We're dealing with a pandemic. You know, we're dealing with our own problems. Um, let's focus on our own problems. We got our own fish to fry. We can use that money and our own personnel here on a lot of bigger, bigger, better things here that we can worry about here, right? Let me know your thoughts. And of course, if you got a different, if you got a different opinion, that's totally okay. I mean, we could put a hundred people in a room and have a lot of different opinions. That's what, in my opinion, makes us great as a country. If we can reasonably have different opinions and talk about things differently, right? Um, I think when we can't reasonably talk about something with different opinions, that's when we get in trouble, right? You have to be able to reasonably have different opinions. And that's why I, I actually like that I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat because I like to look at both sides of the aisle. I like to be able to see both people's opinion. That's where, in this particular case, when I see that both former President Donald Trump made the initial order to withdraw out of Afghanistan, and then Biden also says, yeah, we still need to withdraw out of Afghanistan. He actually delayed it by several months, okay? They both agree to withdraw out of there. I'm like, well, yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be the right order. If they actually agree on something, which they never agree on anything, uh, it's got to be time. 
So yeah, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll keep you up to date with everything going on with our country, going on in Washington, D.C., and going on with this next stimulus package. Uh, if you didn't watch my last video or two, um, President Biden just announced, well, the last of the three major emergency stimulus items. Uh, they really just announced this really big, what I call emergency stimulus items that they passed without Congress. So um, you definitely should watch that because because of these new Delta cases that have just been ballooning to over 100,000 per day, um, we've really just, they've been passing stimulus provisions, I guess is the easiest way to say it, even without Congress. So um, this most recent one helped out over 40 million people. So, and it's, it's putting money in people's pockets. So I'll link you to that video here in a moment. But if you're new to the channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. And share this video with your friends and family. There's also a share button down below. Remember, new videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will keep you up to date with everything uh, going on with our country and stimulus related. You can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video is that big announcement by President Biden on one of those new stimulus provisions that was just announced yesterday and this morning. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.